Hi guys, I am Patty Elhoff. I am the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. Today I'm going to show you how we can get into some tight spaces when we're decoupaging. This is one of those obviously large chunky clothes pins that you can find at the craft store sometimes but not all the time. Let me tell you what supplies we're going to need to get this done or any project you're working with that has small spaces that you need to get into or just unusual places. So we're going to be doing a napkin decoupage and I want to turn this into a refrigerator magnet. I suggest you do not go to the craft store for the magnets. There is something called rare earth magnets. If you want to go over to my website at www.upcyclewithdecoupage.vpweb.com that's the Cardinal stopping in to say hello. I will put a link on my website as to where you can get these. They are much, much stronger uh, than the craft store magnets, which can slip off of the refrigerator and not hold a lot. In order to keep the magnets onto the wood, you're going to want E6000 glue. You need a spoon. <laughs> several brushes and I have one wet rag that I'm keeping my wet brush in. It's always a good idea to keep a wet rag handy to roll up your decoupage brush and that Cardinal's really got a lot to say. <laughs> and we're also going to need just a bowl with water and another rag inside of it. And this will just be to wipe your fingers. When you're working with napkins, you have to be pretty careful. This is decoupage glue. A plastic bag or saran wrap. Just make sure it's the cheapy stuff. Don't get anything expensive. Scissors. Nail file. Heavy grit. As heavy a grit as you can get on the nail file. These are just straight razor blades. Napkin. I'm going to keep some tweezers on hand just in case we need these. And finally, you will need a top coat. I'm going to be using a very high gloss top coat. Whatever top coat you would like is fine. The first thing you'll want to do is take the E6000 glue, and I've already done this. You'll want to glue these magnets onto the wood. This, this is the very first step. You can paint this if you would like to. I am not going to separate these napkins because I want a nice solid background. Sometimes the napkins are so sheer you can actually see through to the wood and we don't want to do that. So we're going to take some decoupage glue and apply it. But you also right now want to get these sides. I'm a little heavy on the glue here. Then we're going to take our napkin, turn it face down, press the napkin down. I'm going to pull these sides up. so that everywhere where I just place the glue, the napkin should be sticking. And now you want to take your saran wrap, and I have a plastic bag here, because you want to be careful that, I know you're going to be tempted to touch the napkin with your fingers, but this is why you want either the saran wrap or this baggie. Now I'm going to wet it. I'm going to dip it in the bowl of water. Just get it a little bit wet and press down on the outside. This water helps the napkin sink into the surface. Now we're not worrying about the back at all right now. Let's just focus on the front. And once the napkin has sunken into, or you've got it down. I 
I'm actually going to add very, very lightly some decoupage glue over the surface. And I say lightly because these napkins tear very quickly and easily. And don't worry that this is closed right now. We'll take care of that in the next step. Now I'm going to put this in a cold oven. I have an electric oven. I'm going to set it to 175 degrees because that's the lowest I can set that oven to. When the bell rings to let me know, the ding, chime, alarm, whatever, goes off to let me know that it's reached 175 degrees, I'm going to turn off the oven and leave this in there to dry for two reasons. Not only does it hasten the drying time, but it really seems to help some of these wrinkles settle out, flatten out, even more so. So I'll go do that and I'll come back as soon as it's dry. Okay, so this is dried. Now you see how everything's stuck together here, which is why we have the razor. Just, of course, be very careful with the razor. I'm just gonna go down the center of that. Cuts very easily. And over here. The razor goes right into that indentation. And you can see I've opened it. So I'm going to take a small piece and put it inside of there, but not before we take our filing, our nail file rather, and go on an angle, but in one direction and right on the edge. You can see how that comes right off and it makes a very clean line. And you see how you've got this open so you can file along any edges up here. Let me file all this away. So for this piece right here, because as you have this on the refrigerator or whatever metal surface you're going to put this on, as you walk past it, you'll be able to see this part. You can see the edges here, but we've already got those covered, the sides. So we're going to want to take one small piece and put it in there. Here, And I just eyeball it. I look at it and see that, you know, it's about as long as my thumb and about this wide. So let me cut that out and I'll show you how we put the paper in there. And I'm going to take the decoupage glue, put it on the inside here. So. Since this piece is going to be showing a little bit, we'll put the glue back here. We're going to place this down, but you're going to need the tweezers to pull it down. And it's a little challenging, so don't, don't get too frustrated. Once you have it down where you want it, Take your brush and gently, first at the top here, just to secure it, go over the top of it, then come on down into this space. Now make sure you don't go over the side here unless, look, I made a mistake earlier and I missed a spot, so I'm just going to, while I'm here, I think I hear a woodpecker, <laughs> while I'm here, I'm going to overlap the side because I missed it before or I tore it. And going to let this dry. If you've got any other places on the napkin where you see that it tore or there's some spots that you're not crazy about, you can, there's a little spot right there that I didn't realize I missed. You can just decoupage right now since we haven't put the top coat on. 
a little section of the napkin and if you're doing something floral just take one of the petals and cover it up or the leaves. I wanted to show you this one that I had done earlier with a very high gloss on it. If you would like to stamp some script onto your napkins, which is always a really nice idea, you can use pigment ink. I don't know about the other inks, but I have a pigment ink pad and I know... Now that's the Blue Jay stopping in. <laughs> I have a pigment ink pad and I know that the ink did not run. I was able to stamp some script on there. I did use the embossing tool, the heat gun, to make sure that it was dry before I decoupaged with it. But you can see there's a very subtle, slight hint there of French script from a stamp. So if you want to use that, I just suggest that you do use the pigment ink. So here's where we're going to use the spoon because we're about to put the top coat, and I'm going with a very high gloss, we're about to put the top coat on. Because I'm working with this clip and I don't want the top coat to dry this way and tear anything when we open it, I'm putting the spoon in there right now. That's an older spoon so I don't care if it gets top coat on it. It's interesting the top coat on this one is getting a little bit milky because it's getting a little chilly now that it's evening. It's okay, it just didn't dry yet. Ultimately, here's what it will look like. All dry, sanded down nicely in all of the, on all of the edges rather. And I've got a lovely place to keep my messages on the refrigerator now. And I hope you like my project today. If you've got any questions, as always, feel free to comment. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate that. And don't forget about my book, Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Amazon, Scobie Books, and Barnes and & Noble. And I will see you next week with at least one new video. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.